What's up guys, Antoine here at DPR and this week we're going over some genetic mysteries. Let's jump right into that. Okay guys, so if you've been breeding for a little while, you know that sometimes things are not going according to plan. Well, sometimes it's, you know, super simple. You put a clown to a pied, you have regular babies. Wonderful, double hat, clown pied. Then you put a clown to a pied and you have clowns. Well, I guess your pipe was a clown. You know, that's fairly simple. Um, but sometimes you have stuff that's just completely unexpected. And today, like, we're gonna go over a few, you know, scenarios of things that can actually happen. And I have like a bunch of examples because this year has been crazy. It's a total head scratcher. So let's check a few of those, uh, you know, breeding problems. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna use a snake that was produced here at, uh, you know, NBK Reptiles. I don't know if you guys remember, but DPR and NBK Reptiles share the same facility. Um, I manage NBK Reptiles uh, ball python collection, but you know, I uh, have my own room in his uh, breeding. So we paired a super pastel double head desert ghost clown to a pastel lesser double head desert ghost clown. Female gave us four eggs and check out one of those baby. So this is a visual desert ghost clown. So obviously this animal is a mind blowing outcome. But when you think about the pairing, when you think about the pairing, uh, it doesn't work because the male was a super pastel and this obviously has no pastel. Pastel clowns are extremely obvious to tell. Um, and also in the clutch, we had a super lesser which the male was not carrying lesser, but the female was. So what actually happened in this clutch is a phenomenon that we call parthenogenesis. So what does that mean exactly? Um, well, basically is that the female reproduce herself with no male. Um, we're really going to go like not diving too deep into scientific uh, terms and scientific facts. It's just going to be, you know, so that everybody can understand what I'm saying. Um, so basically a parthenogenesis um, uh, clutch, a parthenogenic clutch, what happens is that the female only use her gene um, like she actually can breed herself with her own genes. So we hit a uh, desert ghost clown from the, the female being a double head desert ghost clown. We hit a super lesser from the female being a lesser. So she can actually like double up um, her genes, which is kind of really, 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 really weird. Sorry. And another, you know, key element of knowing that you actually had a parthenogenic clutch is that all of the babies will be females. So if I pop this little one right here, you'll see it's a little girl. So all of the babies were females. We had a super lesser and a desert ghost clown and a desert ghost clown. So like, it's so unusual, but again, you have to remember that these things can happen. I had a friend one time, uh, he paired like a incomplete dominant combo male to a hypo female and ended up with have, having like seven hypo visual females. Obviously at first, he caught a first egg and he was like, oh damn, my male is had hypo. And then after two, three, four, five, he was like, well, maybe something's wrong. I'm, I'm only hitting hypos. After every babies were out and he sexed them all, all females, he knew for a fact that the entire clutch was a parthenogenic clutch. So that's one of the scenarios that can happen that can, you know, make you really wonder what's happening with your offsprings. All right, now we're gonna go over a kind of different phenomenon and that's one that I actually wasn't familiar with until I produced this last clutch. Uh, it actually blew my mind because um, I paired a pastel orange dream puzzle to a Mojave vanilla spot nose, hoping to make, you know, uh, orange dream vanilla spot nose with Mojave head puzzle. These are all genetics that goes like super well together and I was really really thrilled um, for that clutch so I'll go over like a few of those babies because you know it's a, it's a pretty cool clutch so let's check some of them out um, this is a orange dream Mojave spot nose 100% head puzzle um, that's a female so honestly I want it to be female heavy on this clutch and I'm like more than pleased with what I have so this other one right here her sister is a orange dream pastel vanilla 100% head puzzle also a female. Here we have another one. This is a orange dream vanilla spot nose, 100% head puzzle. And guess what guys? That is also a female. So out of 
those three, all females. And the last one is all the genes except the vanilla. I, I don't think this one is vanilla. So that's Orange Dream, Pastel, Mojave, Spot Nose, uh, 100% head puzzle. So all in all, these four females are like true gems. I'm not sure if I'm going to sell any of them. That's just like perfect, uh, perfect outcome that we could have. Then what's pretty crazy about the clutch is with uh, the other two babies that we hatched. So let's check them out. All right, so the other two babies were actually little twins. So here's one of the two, and this is a Orange Dream Mojave 100% head puzzle. So here, nothing crazy. We've we've hatched twins in the past. It's ba it basically only uh, implicates that you have two babies inside of one egg. Most of the time, they are pretty small, but not not only like this baby is the biggest one of the two. Uh, the size difference is just completely mind blowing. So here is the actual other baby but that is a surprising outcome for a baby it actually looks like a toy and i swear this baby is truly alive so this little thing right here as you can tell is actually a visual puzzle so how how is that even possible you know so pairing with pastel orange dream puzzle to mojave vanilla spot nose so the very first thing that can come up to your mind is like oh well my female is actually a head puzzle and i've just produced a visual from an unknown head so what are the actual probabilities of having a female with a hidden gene uh, inside well you know it happened to me in the past i had some i had some you know females proving to be head hypo some that proved to be head clown that i didn't know but puzzle it's kind of a you know not that common gene inside of a collection. So having a baby, well, actually having a female that proved to be head puzzle, uh, to me, it seems kind of far-fetched. Well, also the other thing that I have to look at is that I have six babies. If the female is actually a real head puzzle, well, I mean, the ratio would have been three visuals and three heads. Here, I only have one. So this is kind of, you know, some things that are kind of sending me off from that theory of having a female that's actually a 100% head puzzle. Well, the other theory that I have, then that's actually someone, that's a foster belly that uh, came up with uh, that idea and I have started reading about it and it makes more and more sense. So we could be seeing something that's called andrenogenesis. And that's basically when the male double up his genes into a baby. But there's more questions um, regarding this and I'll address them at the end. So basically what andrenogenesis is all about is that the male will double up his genes. So technically if you have a, let's say a visual clown uh, breeding a regular, you would have visual clown, but only males, obviously. And you know, you can't really double up a visual because it's already like the, it has already the two parts of the genes. You know, it's a homozygous clown. Uh, by doubling up, it only means that it will only reproduce homozygous forms. So technically, my male was a pastel orange dream puzzle. Here, if we really have an andrenogenesis uh, phenomenon, it means that that little baby right here would actually be a super pastel, super orange dream puzzle. And to me, when I first saw that baby, I thought, damn, that's a pastel vanilla puzzle with other genes. But it really, really looks like a, um, it really, really looks like a super pastel type of puzzle, but it looks brighter than a super pastel. So if that is actually a super pastel orange dream puzzle, um, it would make a lot of sense in that andrenogenesis uh, phenomenon. But the only thing that I'm really wondering is there were uh, these, you know, two babies are twins in the same eggs and then in the same egg, sorry. And this one has Mojave, but the male doesn't have Mojave. That's obviously a gene from the female. So this one has orange dream and Mojave. So one gene from the male and one gene from the female. They're both males, but my question here, and I'll have to do some research, guys. I'm totally honest with you. I, I'm really like in the blue right here. I don't really know what's going on. Um, can you have a andrenogenesis phenomenon with twins in the same egg, but only one of them has that phenomenon and the other one doesn't? So that's where I am right now. I don't really understand what's going on in this, in this clutch, but I'll definitely redo the pairing to see, you know, if I produce 
any more visual puzzle then it would be the first theory that that's actually pretty simple but on the other hand i have that other type of theory that i have in mind that could also be an explanation to it so all that means guys is that when you do some breeding sometimes it doesn't really mean that oh my female is actually head puzzle super simple they can be more to it so genetic is super complicated and there are some anomalies and oddities that can happen all the time and let's check some um, other kind of thing that can happen to you guys all right so one of the males that was the most useful throughout you know my last two seasons was uh that cinnamon red stripe yellow belly clown i've had almost 10 clutches from him he is a real stud and i kind of have a really good idea of the kind of the type of babies that he is actually throwing so i've hatched cinnamon red stripes yellow belly red stripe i've hatched you know all of his genes separately so i know exactly like the quality of yellow belly red stripe and cinnamon that he's throwing so i'll show you like a head version of him which is technically a cinnamon red stripe uh yellow belly 100 percent head clown so this is pretty much the look that you can expect uh from you know that that's the look that i expect from my male that is a cinnamon red stripe yellow belly clown pretty standard so that's you know what i'm used to see but in a really recent clutch, I hatched something that's completely, um, you know, not expected. Okay, so the other clutch, so basically the same male, the cinnamon red stripe yellow belly clown with this female, which is a pastel lemon blast, pastel lemon blast, wow, really nice. It's a, it's a um, lemon blast bamboo, so technically a pastel pinstripe and bamboo. Uh, these are the three genes that I know she is, I bought her like that. And she doesn't seem to have, you know, anything crazy except those genes but with bamboo it's kind of pretty tough to tell so let's check out one of the baby and that result is just like i have no clue what it is all right so here we have that little baby which is technically what i believe to be a cinnamon red stripe yellow belly um head clown but compared to the other that i hatched and all of the other you know uh combinations like this one exactly like this one I've never seen one that dark and with this pattern. They are uh, completely different. Just go on, like on the other side. Yeah, they'll have a better view. Good. So they are completely different to anything that I've ever seen. Uh, like this one is pretty standard, but this one I have no idea. The like it breaks up the Allen head. It is so so dark and it has that kind of ringer on the tail, which has such an unusual look. Um, I have no clue what this animal is. I have to do more breeding to find out, but sometimes you have, you know, hidden genes and sometimes it's easy. You know, if you hatch and she knew, you look at the pairing, you're like, oh, well, that's pretty easy. Uh, you know what it is. But I contacted the breeder for my female and the pairing was actually a pewter to a bamboo pinstripe. So the only, the only other gene could be cinnamon. So when you look at it, if it's a super cinnamon, well, it'd be, it will be completely you know black so it doesn't make any sense so sometimes what it means is that you don't necessarily understand exactly what you have and you need to go over a few more years of breeding and understanding i don't really need such a male in my collection because i have a visual but i really have to keep him breed him to a clown and try to see if i can hatch you know uh something different if it's a you know a, a gene we know or is it something uh, different or just like a fluke of an unusual look so that's really something you can keep in mind that sometimes you'll have stuff that pops up in your breeding that you know doesn't really make sense you just need to hold back those animals try to breed them and kind of know what's going on and a lot of time I see people being like oh I hatched this you know fire that looks a little different than the others I'm sure there's another gene I'm sure it's a dinker uh, it could really be like I, I mean no harm by that but most of the time there is a lot of vari variability variability is that is that right she says like okay, <laughs> i don't know so vari variability it's kind of a tough word to say um so there's a lot of that <laughs> in you know the combos and each genes uh you have different line of chocolates you have different line of fire different quality, different type, different look. Even in the same clutch, you could have two animals that have exactly the same genes, but are looking totally different. So, oh, well, they're going out, right? <laughs> That's what you were doing at my back. You're like filming the back of, you know, 
I, I, I really didn't understand, but there you go. <laughs> so you can, you can tell me, you know, next time. Um, so you can have a lot of variability. Or I have a lot. I have a Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is going south, man. Let me open the light again. So we have like a dimmer on our lights. So it happens some, it happens sometimes. So what I was trying to say, um, it's only that sometimes you have a lot of variability between uh, two different animals. You can have the same genes, even if it's, if it's from the same pairing, same clutch, two animals with the same genes could be looking different. So it doesn't mean that you have a different look, different outcome than somebody else, or even in your own standards, that it's necessarily something brand new. It could just be a good example. It could just have something to do with the uh, incubation, Sometimes it affects the look of the animals. Uh, so that's also something to keep in mind. So guys, honestly, I am super excited with, you know, um, everything that revolves around uh, genetic and all the oddities and everything that you can actually um, uh, have happening in your collection throughout the years. So if anything happened to you before, that's totally unexpected. I like, I like you to comment down below and let us know like, what the hell went south with your pairing um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was not too complicated and it's not all over the place. Uh, on this guys, make sure to subscribe, go down in the comments and you know, stay tuned. I don't know how to end this video. It's really bad. <laughs>Okay, so I can talk to you like this because you see my face actually. So we're just gonna wait some babies just to, just to show you like in comparison how small is that actual baby. So this is a regular snake, you know, 69 grams exactly where we like it to be. Um, this is the other twin, which is you know 49 grams, you know, kind of a big baby for a twin. But look at that little puzzle. That's crazy. How much does it weigh? Like six. 15 grams that is by far the very smallest the very smallest baby i have ever hatched 15 grams that's completely wild guys crazy it's crazy